Hi guys, welcome back, and thank you for joining me on this monumentous occasion. Joining me on this monumentous occasion. On this monumentous occasion. Momentous. Momentous. Hi guys. Welcome back, and thank you for joining me on this momentous occasion. For I have reached 100 subscribers. Well, the, the monumentous occasion isn't really today, it's actually ages ago because I've been ill and I've been lazy and I don't even know when it happened, but we're now nearly at the end of February and it, it's been there for ages. But I still want to celebrate. So to celebrate this equation, to celebrate this occasion, I'm going to be doing two things. First of all, I, I wanted to do a Q&A, but as you can probably guess, 100 subscribers isn't really enough to pull together a bunch of questions. So instead, I'm going to be replying to some of the comments left on my previous videos. I've already replied to some of these comments in a written form, but this way I can give a bit more detail without having to sit there and type out an essay. I'm also going to make this, but you can't see this and you don't know what it is, but it's blurry. Although you may have read the title or seen the thumbnail and then you actually know what it is. And the reason I'm doing that is because, you know, if you've been around the YouTube bubble, you may have seen there's a silver subscriber plaque for 100,000 subscribers. There's the gold for a million. There's diamond for 10 million. There's a, is it ruby custom for 50 million? And then there's the, the really rubbish one that PewDiePie got for 100 million. So I thought that I'd quite like to make my own, but I thought I'd combine it with the wedding anniversary system that, well, we use it in the UK and America, slightly different. But the first wedding anniversary is the paper wedding anniversary. So I made one out of paper and you still can't see it. If you want to see it, then you need to keep watching all the way to the end of the video. Or you could just skip the whole middle bit if you really felt like it, but don't, because I'm gonna be answering some really good questions. Anyway. That's enough of me just chatting rubbish and not knowing what to say. Let's get on with actually answering some questions. So on that note, I'll leave Billy to make his paper YouTube play button in the background and let's get on to some comments. Brilliant apartment tour. Thank you for sharing. Ah, well, thank you, Tanya. Have you heard of Squatty Potty? It's similar to what you made for the toilet, but maybe a slightly different body position. So in case you've never seen one, a this is a squatty potty, this is a picture of one right here, and this is what I made for my toilet, which as you can see there, they're quite different. I was originally going to talk about squatty potties in my furniture free video, but in the end decided not to bother because the video was already half an hour and it was just getting too long. But what do I think about squatty potties? Well, I think they are an improvement over the normal seated position on a toilet. They definitely aren't the same position, but if you've ever been on the toilet and instead of leaving your feet flat on the floor, you've lifted them onto your toes, then often the poo comes out easier and the stool is just an extension of that. It lifts your feet even higher. If you then lift your toes higher, you're actually pretty close to a deep squat position. But there is one main difference and that's that in a deep squat, you're bearing weight through your feet. Whereas on a squatty potty, you're still bearing weight through your buttocks. Now, I think from a doing a poo perspective, it probably doesn't make much difference. I think that the angle change has already had its effect and the poo is just gonna slip right out. But from a benefit from doing a squat every day perspective, it's not as good. But at the same time, I realize that most people aren't gonna bother building a squat toilet or installing a squat toilet because you know what it's a f***ing hassle and I spent ages building mine and I'm very happy with it but it's, it's not for most people. I wish squat toilets were more common but they aren't so squatty potty it is for now but just remember you you don't actually have to buy a squatty potty the, the branded one or any of the variations of it. They are quite expensive for what they are and although it's nice to have a nice bamboo one that fits around your toilet, any stool that lifts your feet up will do the same job, just maybe not look quite so nice.
you guys should try to get some hammocks to sleep in. Now, I find this comment quite interesting because I don't personally think that hammocks are particularly good for you as a regular sleeping device. I don't think they're bad for you by any means and they definitely have their practical purposes, but the body position, the way you're kind of squashed in there, the curvature of your back, and the fact that they're actually quite soft feeling when you're in there, they don't really add up to the same thing as sleeping on the floor. I don't, I don't think they're bad for you by any means, I just don't think that they are really a great thing to be sleeping in every night. You can't really sleep on your sides very easily, you can't really can't sleep on your front, the variability is actually quite lacking. Again, they have great uses and, you know, it's an interesting idea, I just don't think they really have any health benefit to sleeping in a hammock over a floor or a thin mattress. <sighs> now, I love this comment. I'll, I'll just say it first and then I'll try to explain my thought process when reading this comment. Leave it to polar bears to steal from other cultures and then do it wrong. So, I think that this comment is referring to me, the white person, the polar bear, as stealing from another culture for living furniture free? I think. Maybe I'm misinterpreting it. <laughs> Maybe if, if you know what this person means, then um, please let me know because that's my only interpretation that polar bears are white, I'm white, and I'm stealing from other cultures by being furniture free, but in some way doing it wrong, which again, furniture free has got nothing to do with culture, it's just natural human life for all of history until the last 10,000 years. So I don't know what this comment's getting at, but I think that's it. And to that, I say, if I want to sit on the floor, I will sit on the floor. Thank you very much. But thank you for the comment. I mean, it helps the YouTube algorithm, so I'm not going to complain that much. At 21 minutes and 41 seconds, you show a handmade balance beam. Do you have any plans for this? I'd like to make one. Well, it's funny you should ask, Anne, because not the next video, but the video after that will in fact be a video on three or maybe four different ways to make a balance beam and the plans for all of them and some of the uses you can get out of them. I say three or four because I'm not quite sure if I can be bothered to build the fourth level of balance beam because it's kind of complicated but it's something I've wanted to do for myself anyway so we'll see. But yeah, soon in the next few weeks there'll be a video about balance beams, there'll be plans that you can look at which they're really not that complicated so I mean if you have any woodworking skills you better do it. And yeah, and they're also all made out of scavenged materials, Ooh. otherwise known as me picking up random bits of wood and scaffolding. Ah, this question is also by Anne. What about dancing? And this is in reference to my The Body Thrives on Chaos video. I think dancing is very good for chaos and randomness, but it definitely has its limitations and it also depends on what kind of dance you do. If you're doing something very contemporary and contact improv-y with a partner where you're doing lots of lifts and a lot of getting down to the ground and very strange and interesting movements, then I think it does cover quite a broad range of natural movements. One of the main ones it lacks though is climbing and pulling movements, pulling up, lifting your body weight in that particular way. Often that's not covered very much in that kind of movement. Also, if you are doing a style of dance that has a particular rule set, let's say, a particular way of dancing, you may find that it's lacking in the variation that you might be looking for. But overall, I love dance. I actually work for a dance company uh, as a performer. I'm not a dancer myself. I do do some dance in the performance. I actually perform as a parkour athlete, but yeah, whenever I do it with them, I always think I come away more connected to my body and more able to move fluidly. I think it's great. Just 
Again, as with most things, one thing doesn't cover everything. Try to be as variable as possible, but it's definitely one to add to your repertoire. Question. It seems like your upper backs, particularly your partners, are quite rounded here. Does that not hurt your back? Are you working towards sitting with a flatter back? So this question is in reference to the time lapse I posted of me and Francis eating our food on the floor on the table mat that we lay out on the floor. I can completely understand where Faye is coming from with this question. First of all, me and Francis do both have an anterior tilt or tilting forward of our thoracic, our chest area. And it's something we're working on and we have been for the last few years and there has been slow and steady progress using movement and anatomy and motion to improve it. But it's not instant, it's not quick. Sometimes it can be very quick, but for us it's taken a long time and it is progressively getting better. The second part to this is that I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding that we should always have a straight back as humans and that somehow that's healthier. The human back has an amazing ability to move through lots of different shapes and when you think about what we're doing here, we're sitting here eating dinner, it's definitely the most useful position. So it makes a lot of sense to have that curvature of the upper back. If we were to sit straight it would be quite uncomfortable really and Throughout the day, we spend a lot of time in a lot of different positions because we live furniture free. So we often spend time laying on our front, working on laptops or all kinds of different positions. So that position is just one of many positions we go through. And the idea that we should constantly have a straight back is not particularly a healthy one because I think it makes people often try to force themselves to constantly sit with a straight back position. But that will just leave you rigidly sitting in that position instead of rigidly sitting in any other position and it's no better to be in that position than to have a curve in your upper back. For instance right now so I can lean over my microphone I'm sitting in exactly the position that me and Francis were sitting in while eating food. It is the most practical position for this moment in time and in a minute when I'm doing some other stuff on my computer I'm probably going to sit up more straight but Thank you very much Faye because it is an interesting question and it did make me think for a while about whether what we were doing was right or not but in the end I think that although you should not spend your whole life in that position it's completely normal to spend some amount of time in that position every day as it is with most positions. Great video, I went furniture free for several years in my 20s, please link to someone 70 to 80 who lives furniture free. Now I'm not sure if this was meant to be some kind of accusation that old people can't possibly be furniture free. I don't think it was, I think it's a genuine question, but I'm going to try my best to find some evidence of older people being furniture free. Now while I can't guarantee that the people that I'm showing on screen right now are 70 to 80 years old, I think that what we need to understand is that there are older people living furniture free but generally they're not in the western world and generally that means it's harder for me a western person to find evidence and footage of them but if you look in videos of tribes and videos of people in India particularly because a lot of people in India do live without furniture you'll see huge quantities of at least older people living without furniture on the floor on a daily basis and again this isn't perfect evidence if I was going to sit here and spend ages researching I could quite possibly find some people that were definitely in their 70s and 80s living furniture free but I'm not going to do that but hopefully this makes it clear that naturally people do end up being furniture free for their whole life when they live in a culture where not owning furniture is the norm and on that note it looks like Billy is just finishing up his paper play button so let's go back to on camera Billy on camera Billy other on camera Billy to show it off and hopefully with that I've answered some of your questions and now it's time for the reveal of the paper play button oh that's just horrible lighting isn't it I'll film some b-roll and slot it in right So yeah, 
I think I'm quite happy with this uh, play button. I'm quite happy with how it came out. Uh, I didn't know that I could be this neat with cardboard. I've never really made much out of paper, but I'm quite a makey, makey, quite a makey person. So yeah, I'm quite happy with how it came out. And I'm really looking forward to how I'm gonna make a cotton play button. Not really sure about that yet, but I have to reach that milestone for, for the, but I have to reach that milestone first, which is 300 subscribers. And when I do, I'm going to go back through the comments and answer more questions. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments of this video or any video, and maybe I'll get around to it. And if I do get around to answering your question in one of the Q and A's, I will make sure to reply to your comment to tell you that your comment has been answered in a video. And on that note, let's end it there. Thank you for watching. As I said, comment, and then all that other rubbish, you know, subscribe, like, all that stuff. <sighs> it makes me feel really dead inside every single time I have to say that. Bye!